Welcome once more everybody to our Redemptorist Oratory here in Liverpool at Bishop Eden. We're going to celebrate the Sunday of the week after Easter, sometimes called Low Sunday, but I prefer the old name, Sunday in White, Dominica in Albis, because it reminds us of the people who were baptised last Sunday. Well, in this instance, this year, the people who should have been baptised last Sunday and would have been baptised last Sunday. But they used to wear their white robes through the week, and then the following Sunday, um, they were able to take their white robes off. And so it was called Sunday in White, continuing to celebrate the great Easter festival. In fact, the church regards all these eight days just like Easter Sunday itself. In fact, when I was looking up, checking my notes, I was reminded that when I celebrate the prayer of the preface, um, I say again on this day, as if it were Easter Sunday still. So we're going to begin today with a couple of verses of that wonderful hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. If you know it, please do sing along, and don't be embarrassed if the other members of the family start laughing at your singing. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, his the scepter, his the throne. Alleluia, his the triumph, his the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, and redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. Alleluia, he is near us, faith believes no questions how. Though the cloud from sight received him when the forty days were o'er, shall our hearts forget his promise? I am with you evermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So as I say, we're continuing to celebrate the great feast of Easter. And let's just pause for a moment and ask our Lord to help us to listen carefully to the Scriptures, because today the Scriptures carry a very powerful message. And children, I want you particularly to listen to that first reading, because remarkably it tells us that in those early days of the church, they didn't have big churches like Bishop Eden next door, not a huge church, but it's big enough, or St. Mary's down the road, or our wonderful cathedral of Christ the King in the city. We're told that to celebrate the Eucharist, to celebrate the breaking of bread, they met in one another's homes. You know, Father Andrew told me that he was uh, looking at a cartoon the other day, and the devil was talking to God. And he said, there you are, I've closed all your churches. And God said in reply, yes, and I've reopened them in everyone's home. So there's something for us to think about. Your homes now become this treasured place, reminding you that God really does dwell there. And that in that sacred space that you've created for yourselves, and you remember I suggested that, that Every night at seven o'clock you gather in your special place at home and we pray together. So in this celebration of Mass, wherever you are in the home now, as we see in the Gospel, Jesus can break through any walls. There are no barriers for Jesus and he's uniting us all, wherever you're following this Mass from. I was told that one or two people have even been following this Mass from Canada. So there we are, we're united across the world with our brothers and sisters in the faith. Let's pause for a moment. In the Gospel tonight, we hear about Jesus coming back to the Apostles on Easter Sunday evening. Last week we heard about what happened in the morning. Tonight Jesus comes back to them. They're all gathered there except Thomas is missing. And remember, they let Jesus down very badly. But all he said to them was, peace be with you. 
and he told them to go and forgive others. So at the beginning of our Mass, we ask his forgiveness for anything we've done wrong. Let's pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now here's an easy version of the Gloria, where you just have to sing back what I sing to you. So children, I hope you could manage this one as well as the clapping Gloria. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Well now, Brother James is always is here as our wonderful technician. He's also going to do the readings for us, so listen out for this first reading. It describes the early church in those very early days when the apostles were still around in the Acts of the Apostles. And then after the, the psalm, we have a reading from St. Peter's first letter. And just listen out to what Peter's saying there. He's reminding us, and reminding the early community that he was writing to, that even though, unlike him, they hadn't seen Jesus, they still believed. That's just like us. And we'll hear that repeated in the Gospel with Thomas. Okay, so it's over to Brother James. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the Apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the Apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple every day, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. 
Let the sons of Aaron say, His love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. I was thrust down, thrust down and fallen, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my saviour. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good, good for his, his love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The second reading is taken from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons, by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoilt or soiled and never fade away, because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's power will guard you until the salvation which has been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold. Only it is more precious than gold which is corruptible even though it bears testing by fire. And then you will have praise and glory and honour. You did not see him, yet you love him. And still without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious that it cannot be described, because you believe. And you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward, that is, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Jesus said, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. 
Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Right, well if you're standing up, it's time to sit down, and we're just going to share a little thought with you. First of all, I'm hoping the children are going to, to listen in, because although it's not solely for the children, I brought Freddie Freckles along today, and you can see more clearly, I think, because I'm leaving him on this chair here. One of the things that, during this very difficult time, that Freddie began to realise was that although he could see his mum and dad were worried, and his sister Susie sometimes got a bit... Oh, I don't know, disheartened and wondered when all these problems that are surrounding us at present are going to go away. Nevertheless, there was a lot of goodwill, not just in his family, but they were in touch with their friends with social media, and they were in touch with their neighbours. They called out to them, especially when they went out on a Thursday night to clap for all the, the workers in the hospitals and who were keeping the country going in the shops and so on. And so Freddie realised that if he could behave well, and if he could be generous, and if he could be supportive, it made all the difference. And then he heard about this amazing old soldier who's 99 years old, started walking up and down his garden. And uh, I think at the last count has made over £22 million for the National Health Service. And it's captured the imagination of the country. And there are all sorts of things like this going on. Communities looking out for one another, supporting one another. And you know, it made me think of what life was like in the early church. That description that St Luke gave us in the Acts of the Apostles that we've just listened to. They all looked after one another. They shared what they had in common. They met for the breaking of bread in each other's homes and they met for the prayers. Now at the moment we can't all meet together, but through the wonder of the modern technology we are all linked up. Um, I was amazed that two of the masses that have gone out have had 1,000 over one of them, had over 1,500 people locking on one way or another. And, and so it's just amazing to think that all these people are linked together through this celebration. And lots of other celebrations of the Eucharist are taking place in the different parishes and the cathedrals. And we're linked in with all of those, because in, in, in a sense there's only the one mass that's been made present for us in all the different places as it has been down through the centuries. Jesus at the Last Supper, and then saying, do this in memory of me, and right down through the centuries, we've carried on doing it. Now, it's quite clear when you listen to the readings today that the apostles in those early days of the church, lots of people started believing because they had heard the apostles' message. These were people who knew Jesus, who lived with him, who listened to him, who watched him perform those amazing miracles to make people better. And now they were spreading the message, but they realised that they were talking to people who hadn't had the privilege of seeing Jesus. And we're even told about one of Jesus' closest friends, Thomas. Some of you may remember that Thomas, even at the Last Supper, was the one who was always questioning things. When Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house there are many rooms. You know the way. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? What did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth and the life. And here we are. Jesus has now died, and Thomas won't believe the apostles that he's risen from the dead. He must have been very embarrassed on the Sunday after Easter, which is the Sunday we're celebrating now. That's why that gospel links the two Sundays. And then Thomas turns up, and or Thomas is there, and Jesus turns up again, as they say. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus is suddenly there. There are no barriers for Jesus. Jesus is wherever we want him to be. In fact, he's everywhere. And what we need to find out is how to help him live in our homes and in ourselves, so that we can build up this great sense of belonging 
And just as Jesus then breathed on the apostles and sent them forth, even on that first uh, uh, Sunday night, Easter, Easter night last week, we were listening to that morning part. As I say, today we heard what happened in the evening. And then, of course, Jesus had also promised when he finally returned to the Father at the Ascension that the Holy Spirit would come again and he came with great power on Easter Sunday, on uh, Pentecost Sunday. So we're looking forward to that uh, in a few weeks' time. We'll build up to uh, Pentecost through this Easter season. But for now, I, I'm always looking, as you know, for practical ways. So again, children, I hope you're listening to this. Um, I mentioned in one of my little dispatches, I don't think it was during one of the masses, that down the road in St Mary's Parish, um, one of the doctors there, Dr Kuruvilla, Dr George, um, he was one of the key people who set up uh, Wilton Community Life. And one of the things he wanted to do during this uh, lockdown period was to try and make sure the community was indeed looking after itself and people were looking after one another. And he thought it'd be a great idea if some of the children started writing messages to the older people, especially the older and more lonely people. Uh, well, I'm glad to tell you um, that I've got proof that it's been happening uh, because the message went out through Much Walton School. We haven't got a similar program here in Bishop Eaton, but what struck me was, and this, this was from one of our children in, in Much Walton, um, in fact, I've got a couple of them here, but I'll just um, begin. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole of his letter, otherwise we'll be here all day. But he, he just says, uh, I don't know you, so he's writing, Dear friend, he says, I don't know you and you don't know me, but I want to write this hoping you had an amazing Easter. And then he, he gives us his name, and he goes on to say he lives in Wilton Village with his mum and dad. He loves going on holiday with them, and he tells them all sorts of interesting things about himself. And he ends up saying... Um, he tells them about various things that, that, uh, that he loves um, and he ends up saying that he's hoping to hear from the person who gets his letter and he's hoping and he's wishing them all success and safety. Isn't that lovely? So children have started doing this and these letters are being spread around. It struck me that in your own neighbourhood you, you may know people, in fact mum and dad may even be shopping for somebody. And perhaps if you wrote those people a little letter, wouldn't that be fantastic? Whether you're at Much Wilton or at Bishop Eaton or at Carlton House or wherever you go to school, that you started thinking, how can I make somebody else's life that little bit happier? I think the more we do of this, the more we reach out, uh, the more we walk up and down the garden and raise 22 million. Brother William's been walking up and down our garden, but we haven't raised anything yet from Brother William's walking. But anyway, you know what I mean. That we, we're, the more we kind of look to other people, think about how we can help other people, the more I think we're living the way the apostles were teaching the people to live in the early church. And the more we're remembering what Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way. Jesus demonstrated how we can look after one another. And the whole Easter mystery is celebrating that he didn't leave us orphans. He did rise from the dead. And he said, I'll be with you always. And now we're going to celebrate that fact in the most wonderful way by celebrating again our Eucharist. So, we're going to make our profession of faith uh, and we'll simply use the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We're going to offer our prayers of intercession. I want to begin by praying now for Pope Francis and thanking God for his inspiring leadership of the Church at this very difficult time. I want to pray too with you for our Archbishop Malcolm, for Bishop Tom, his assistant, and also for Bishop Vincent, who's now 
in Christopher Grange and hasn't been too well recently. Let's pray for the bishops all over the country. I always think of my own special friend in Hallam, Bishop Ralph. May they support and strengthen their communities and may we all work together to bring Christ's hope and peace in these troubled times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for all those who are in the front line at the moment. We cheer and clap them on a Thursday evening, the doctors and nurses, the carers and social workers, the people who are keeping the food coming through to us, um, beginning, of course, with those who are looking after the, the farms and the shops and so on. Let's pray for everybody who make it possible to live as peacefully as we can at this time. Lord, fill them with hope and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We've had a little bit of good news this week about one or two people who've been improving in health. I know Bertha Farrelly, um, she was very ill before all this virus problem began, but um, she's gradually getting stronger and very grateful for all the prayers. I know that George Simmons has also recovered, um, so we thank God for that. I'd like to pray for Les Williams. I met his wife Brenda just outside the church the other morning, and we pray that he will get better soon. We've had, uh, and also can I remember again, those who should have been baptised and received into the church last week, so we think of how soon Jen Jen and their children we think of Craig and Matthew and Michael and Michael's son Daniel. We pray that very soon they will be able to receive the sacraments and be able to celebrate the Eucharist with us. Lord, in your goodness, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And we've had a number of deaths uh, during the last week. There were three funerals, Anne Mary Drew, Cornelius Joseph Tyrrell and John Sims. During this coming week, there are two more funerals. William Thomas Addy and Margaret Mooney, um, and also uh, others who've died recently, Frank Durker's funeral is at the very end of the month, Veronica Page and Hesse Shanks. So we remember them all, and there are large lists in on the websites for both parishes, so I hope we've included everybody there, but let's just pause for a moment and pray eternal rest for those who've died, whether from the virus or from some other Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And let's make the prayers of Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. There's this lovely prayer of Pope Francis to conclude our bidding prayers. And it's a prayer asking Our Lady again to pray with us. You, salvation of your people, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide, so that, as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Dear Heavenly Mother, help us to live these difficult days filled with hope, with renewed unity, with a true spirit of obedience to what is required of us, with the certainty that after this trial we may arrive at the blessed and glorious hour of the resurrection. Amen. So, I'm going to prepare the gifts for the celebration of our Mass. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. O God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that re renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And I thought today we'd celebrate the third Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross, for by your cross, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving, in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation, the offering of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an, ever, an, an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our redemptress saints, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servants, Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory, the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. So we prepare for Holy Communion, and we pray in the best way we know, using the words Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So, let's pray for peace for everybody, everybody joining in with us in this Mass, everybody who is special to us, and even those whom we find difficult. Let's pray for peace across our world. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
we could just pray, Jesus, I love you, you are my Lord. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. You are my Lord. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. You are my Lord. And just to help you make that act of spiritual communion, let's pray a simple prayer. Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in Holy Communion. Even though I cannot receive you now physically, I beg you to come and fill me with all the graces and blessings that I need to live my life faithfully in your service. I ask this for myself, for the members of my family, for those who are with me celebrating this Mass, either in my home or elsewhere. Lord, through this prayer, unite us in the way that you own only you can, Remembering your promise, I will be with you always. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, big thank you to Brother James for coming along and uh, helping me make sure that everything's technically correct. I really do enjoy these opportunities. I really do feel very privileged to be able to celebrate this Mass. And I do thank you for the wonderful response we're getting across the two parishes and indeed beyond. Long may it continue and let's continue to try, if we can, to set a little time aside at 7 o'clock each evening as well. You know, I'm getting a little bit nostalgic in my old age. I've realised that this Sunday, this very Sunday, low Sunday, it's exactly 60 years since I first set foot in Bishop Eaton as a little boy of 13 on my first vocations meeting. Um, they used to call it the Easter meeting. We met in, in, the, in Easter week. We came up here on the Tuesday. And that year, I looked it up just to be absolutely accurate, the Tuesday uh, of Easter week that year was the 19th of April. So it's exactly 60 years since I first set foot. And if you want a bit more information, there happened to be another young man on that meeting as well, a certain Father Andrew Burns. So there we are, we're going to celebrate in style this weekend. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. the last verse of that hymn we opened with, Alleluia, King it up. No, we'll sing the third verse, Alleluia, Bread of Angels. Alleluia, Bread of Angels, Thou on earth our food our stay. Alleluia, Hear the sinful flee to Thee from day to day. Intercessor, friend of sinners, earth's redeemer.